into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. <laughs> And welcome, you are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on NBC News, CNBC News and NBC Sports Radio Station, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Audible, Amazon Music, iTunes, TuneIn, Podchaser, Spreaker, Tiki Live, Rumble, and about 28 other platforms. Why so many places? Because I want to maximize my splatter zone for more hope and happiness, balancing out all the bad news that's so readily available out there with some good news. So I'm excited to tell you this is uh, the week that we celebrated 800 shows. <laughs> that was on Monday and I am so delighted and we'll do one more applause here. <laughs> I think I'm in the very small percentage of people who have over 800 podcasts now, which just means I can talk a lot. <laughs> and I'm so delighted that you've all been here with me, supporting me. And, you know, they said that uh, positive, good news, uh, uh, feel good kind of shows would not last. And they're wrong because I'm still here. And thank you for all your support. And, and I do bring you topics and guests to that end so that you can feel great and just recently this last year in my eight uh, ninth year we started special series and i'm delighted that today is one of those days it's called real talk with colette tracy and dr marissa please welcome back to my show my lovely professor phd student uh <laughs> author of both sides now uh entrepreneurial business savvy uh a real woman collect tracy <laughs> welcome wow. back to the show <laughs> thank you for that dr marissa i feel the same way about you and congratulations wow thank 800 you. shows yeah that's yep. today's 802 today's 802, 802. Wow. and still going <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and start. That's my first gratitude. Uh, those of you who uh, have not tuned in before, we start almost every show with what I call breakfast with me. And to this morning is bre breakfast with Colette and I, uh, where you take a bite of my gratitude sandwich. I see mm -hmm. eyeballs rolling in. Welcome, welcome. You can use the chat to uh, play along with us with your gratitude, eight specific things that you are grateful for. If you start every morning like this, I promise your day is going to have a very um, uh, uh, rose colored tint to it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. my first gratitude was uh, this is show 802. And uh, Colette, what is your gratitude? Your first being, gratitude? Being here today. Being here today. Fabulous. My second is my youngest best little girl in the whole wide world, Sarah Way, is turning today, 23. So uh, I'm going to do happy birthday, dear Sarah Way. Happy birthday to you. I love you. She's in the next room. She Aww. came down for her birthday. And <laughs> Way is actually Mandarin for peace. So she is wow. my heart, my peace, my heart. And um, so I'm so grateful that she's having her birthday. And in Chinese culture, uh, when a child has a birthday, uh, it's actually the mom that gets to celebrate. Oh. So th that's oh. the Chinese tradition. Oh, that's a beautiful Yay. tradition. Thank you. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. And you are. Sorry. Happy birthday, Sarah. That was from Colette. Oh, <laughs> She's, in She's like mortified. I just sang to her. <laughs> All right. And what are you grateful for? It's a beautiful, sunshiny day here in the Chicago area. And I hear that 
some of the other parts of the country are getting some bad weather right now. So really happy uh -huh. to, I'll be at crisp here. It's a beautiful and still beautiful and funny. So great. I'm grateful that I had another great night at the Newport Beach Film Festival last night watching Ray and Raymond and uh, Ellen McGregor and another big actor that I I'm like, I'm such, I'm like the worst media person mm -hmm. in the world because I don't, <laughs> my, my name recognition is so bad, but I'll find that out in a second. And, and, but it was a great movie and the party, but tonight is the biggest thing. We'll talk about it at commercial break. But uh, if you don't have plans tonight, keep listening. You'll have plans tonight with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, one more gratitude. Okay. I am grateful for art, specifically theater, and I am working with a theater in the Chicago area called the Goodman Theater, and very grateful for them. Wonderful. I am grateful that I got to cover the Academy Museum opening here in Beverly Hills, which was really cool. And I think my daughter's going to take the um, poster <laughs> with her when she goes back to San Francisco. All right, and now we go to the bottom of the bun which is appreciation. What do you appreciate about yourself? And the reason why we do that is because we are not taught to like ourselves necessarily, mm. you know, don't want to be too full of yourself, you know, mm. um, let, Definitely. you know, help others. Don't, don't talk about, don't toot your own horn. But what that has done is it's a uh, grown up, a generation of people that are constantly looking for likes with their antenna up outside themselves, social media making True. things even um, more exponentially uh, felt with looking for likes, literally. So what we want to do is uh, be very clear and very uh, uh, purposeful about finding out things that we like about ourselves. So what do you like about yourself, Colette? Um, I would say my ability to multitask. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say that one too. So uh, people have told me that I do the work of three people. So um, I, I, there's only one way to do that and that's in parallel. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think that, exactly. so I must be a good multitasker mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. go ahead. Second one. Mm -hmm. um, my ability to see the best in people. Mm -hmm. I can't do that because I'm working on that. Mm. I, I have to be honest, it's much easier for me to see what's wrong than what's mm. right. And so I have to really work at the discipline of that. And mm. uh, on Sunday, I said, I, I, my intention is that I see the blessing versus the blemish in people. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm working on it. I love that honesty too. That's not always something that, and I would say probably nine times out of 10, I do. I look for it, but it is a trained thing. So for yeah. me, I would say also my honesty definitely is something I appreciate about myself. Um, I appreciate that I keep it real. Mm -hmm. And people have said that I, you know, when I put the moose on the table, which is my Canadian <laughs> right. version of talking about the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more. Hmm. My ability to appreciate life. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And my, I, I appreciate that I am funny Ooh, and I love to laugh. Are. Thank you. Ooh. So there you go. Thank There's you. the top and the bottom of the bun. Thank you for having breakfast with us. This is this morning's uh, breakfast of gratitude sandwich. <laughs> mm -hmm. I promise if you do this 30 days in a row, the day that you have sandwiched between the top of uh, gratitude and the bottom of appreciation will give you an amazing different perspective on life and you'll begin to attract more and more good things. All right. Now, Colette, tell us what we're talking about today. Well, uh, we are going to be talking about how women aren't always supportive of one another. Of course, that doesn't include me and you. Um, obviously, uh, me being part of your show, Dr. Marissa, is, is gracious on your part. So, uh, And it doesn't include all women, but sometimes, and I would say, I guess from my perspective, when we're young, 
sometimes uh, we're, we're tougher on each other. I would say the older I've gotten, uh, the more uh, women have embraced me and I have uh, embraced them. So it's just something that, uh, for me, that that's my perspective on it. How do you feel about that, Dr. Murphy? Well, you know, in my promo, uh, you know, it's is it a dog? Is it really a dog eat dog world, or cat eat cat? Which is my try to be funny uh, <laughs> twist on on male and female because I have found as an organizational psychologist in the workplace, and I work with human dynamics like power, politics, miscommunication, conflict. I know that you also do that work. Uh, it, in companies, I've noticed the phenomena of men naturally, most of the time, will point out in meetings, so-and-so did a great job on this, or they'll introduce their colleagues and say, you know, this is a person who does, you know, wonderful things or just hit the target of this or whatever. And they're very good, natural mentors of each other. If you have uh, someone who's mentoring you, you know, they have your back, you know, that they're not going to take, um, not all the time, but you know that most of the time they're going to buoy you up and give you credit and not take credit for something you've done most of the time. But with women, it's so interesting. Um, women that are mentored by men do very well because they do the same thing for the woman. But women with women, uh, you know, that whole catty woman uh, mm -hmm. stereotype that women are catty, that they, you know, <laughs> that's the cat <laughs> and, and, and they're not so supportive. And I mm -hmm. noticed that not just as a professional, uh, organizational psychologist consulting in the workplace, but also personally that mm -hmm. I, um, on the, both on the giving and the receiving, when I see a woman that's doing well, mm -hmm. it's not my first natural reaction. And I'm being honest and I, mm -hmm. you know, it real. I'm not proud of this, <laughs> keeping it real. I'm not mm -hmm. proud of this fact, but I know that my first response when somebody, you know, I see it flash on social media that they're, you know, speaking somewhere or they got an award, even though I have a plethora of awards and I have a plethora of achievements and, and I love my life and I'm grateful for everything. There is that first little tinge of, hmm, I wonder how she got that. Or, you know, how come I don't have that? Or, and it's horrible and I'm not proud of it. And I work at it where, uh, you know, a lot of uh, global uh, thought leaders and teachers, uh, including my big brother, Michael Bernard Beckwith, have said, when you uh, can celebrate someone else's successes mm -hmm. uh, uh first and foremost and more so than your own then you've got the ticket like you've reached yeah. that point of spiritual you know nirvana or or mm -hmm. excellence and i'm not there and, mm -hmm. and i have to literally uh part of my bliss discipline is to take the breath and release that negative energy and go yay sometimes i'm like Ah, you know, I'm not really happy, but I'm happy for you. And uh, I force myself to reach out and say congratulations. And that's awesome. And because it, I don't know why, why mm -hmm. is it? Is it, mm -hmm. is it because women feel more threatened by another woman? Mm -hmm. Is it because we, um, it, it, it takes us to a place where we don't appreciate ourselves? Is it because it's a, a biological thing because you want to compete for the man in the past or the, the accolades yeah. to look good, to attract the man? You know, those people who are into that kind of um, theories mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, from the old days of gender differences and what women are supposed to want or desire. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but all mm -hmm. I know for sure is that I totally see that and I totally feel that and it is my work to mm -hmm. change that, which is one of the reasons why I open myself up. I have two co-hosts. Mm -hmm. I have three co-hosts. One's a guy, mm -hmm. a young guy on Thursday, Sam works, and then two are women, yourself mm -hmm. and then Cynthia Cahi on Friday mm -hmm. with Fired Up Fridays. So, so um, the phenomena is there. I can attest mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it is personal. I can attest to it, and it's not good. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not. It's not that it's not good. Sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. It's not useful. Mm -hmm. 
I don't like calling things right or wrong. It's not useful. Right. So, so that's, that's my take. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right. Um, and I, I have to ask like, why is that? And I would, I think there is this mentality and, uh, you know, I don't want to say, uh, it's the patriarchy, right? Cause I don't, I don't want to say that because I think it's men and women. Mm -hmm. But I think from a woman's perspective, we're always taught that there's not enough, right? There's not enough. You said the man thing, um, especially uh, in the younger years, very, very competitive in that way. Um, as for myself, um, you know, I think I have a healthy uh, uh, competitiveness maybe with other women. But um, I don't, I, 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 how I take away from that, and there's always exceptions, and there are always times that I feel differently, but um, I really try to focus on myself. Um, a long time ago, I was told by one of my professors, you know, uh, when I said, you know, I was young in this program where it was like way above my head, and I said, I can't compete, you know, with everyone. And she said, you don't have to compete with everyone. You have to compete with you you're competing with you. And that's very true. And I think sometimes if we put that focus on ourselves, but then you could come across as being full of yourself, right? You can't win. You can be full of yourself or, you know, just uh, not paying attention, being self-absorbed, those kinds of things. But I think sometimes when you really uh, put that focus on yourself and you say, what did I do yesterday? And how can I be that much better today? It's a lot easier. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, getting back to the fact that women are cultured that way. If you look at men, okay, and I think the younger generations today are amazing because uh, if you look at men, they've always been able to compete and shake hands afterwards or they, you know, they duke it out. Okay. And it's when a man is competitive with you, and I've worked in a lot of of quite a few male dominated industries, they're in your face about it. If they don't like you, they're gonna let you know, right to your face, whatever. Where I find women are, you know, the, the mean girl kind of thing where they gang up or, uh, you know, those kinds of things. But I, what I wanna say too, is the young women today uh, in, in, in that sense, in the competitive kind of sense are being raised more like boys in that way or men. And I think, the next generations coming up will be a lot better with that because uh, if you look at our generation, uh, Dr. Marissa, you know there wasn't a lot of room for women in the executive suites, right? We can argue that there still aren't, uh, there still isn't a lot of room for women, um, but it's getting better. So, mm -hmm. uh, but we have to take uh, our stance and and deliberately try to change that, you know, and. Um, and I've had uh, probably, you know, I've been blessed. I've had a lot of mentors in my career. A lot of them were men, but a few of them were women, yourself included, or at least someone that wanted to give me a chance. But I have found as I've gotten older, um, it's easier to do that with other women. It's easier to be a part of that. Um, you know, I, I go out and, you know, like you, I love to dress up. And if I see another woman and she looks pretty or, you know, whatnot, I'll smile or just smile in general. And lots of times women will come up to me and say, wow, I love your outfit. You're so well put together. And, and I'll say the same thing back. And my, you know, my, one of my kids was with me and like, mom, do you have to talk to everybody? <laughs> <laughs> but it is a way of, uh, you know, uh, it's a mentality kind of thing. And, uh, and I'm not saying for me, I'm, I'm, I'm a beyond reproach. I'm not saying that, but I try to make it a point. It's a conscious effort. And I think it's truly because of the way my parents raised us. I have a sister, I have one sister and I had two brothers. My, one of my brothers passed away. My sister and I, thank you. He was very close to me, very, very close to me. But, um, but my sister and I, we've always been close and we kind of made it a point never to be like the sibling rivalry you know we were 10 years apart to begin with so we didn't have that we we were always happy for each other and trying to help each other not to say you know there wasn't any but i think it, it takes a conscious effort otherwise uh and we can't help how we're raised also you know so yeah 
yeah, good points, good points. Um, uh, I'm going to jump off too, and hopefully I remember the second one when I finish the first one. One is that fixed pie, like you started saying, that one of the reasons why we um, don't celebrate or support someone else's successes, a uh, woman's in particular, is that, you know, if they have it, that means they took it away from me, mm -hmm. which is not true because I choose to believe that we live in a, you know, I always say go up, UP, mm -hmm. unlimited possibilities. Mm -hmm. It's not a fixed buy. If I have something like breath, if I take a breath, I take nothing from you. Everybody has, you know, more than enough breath. And so if I can adjust that BS, the belief system that it's a fixed pie, and unfortunately our uh, society and our organizations are in that hierarchical position where it is a fixed pie and, you know, only one out of 10 gets up to that next level. No wonder, you know, there's so many unhappy, disgruntled, apathetic people in the workplace is because right. this is a small percentage that may, made it, you know, climbing up to the top. So mm -hmm. if we change our hierarchies, if we change our um, thinking around fixed pie, that might help, right? Mm -hmm. Our ability to be able to complement and be able to support and be able to uh, mentor and nurture. Uh, one of my very wonderful uh, projects that I'll never forget is I was hired to uh, um, design and implement a mentoring program for women mm -hmm. at Neutrogena. Mm -hmm. And I still have people to this day who Great remember company. that. And, mm -hmm. and it was, and it is a great compliment to be remembered for that. And I love that it's still there and it's still operating, mm -hmm. you know, so that's like super cool. The other thing, and I do remember my second point, <laughs> 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 which is um, we can learn from men. You were talking about the way men are and, mm -hmm. and be, they're being able to be real right? They're not going to pretend mm -hmm. if they don't like something. And in particular, I get to witness this uh, in, in my consulting where I'll be in a, a strategy session or I'll be in a, a, a meeting where decisions are being made. And I'll watch two men go at it heatedly in the mm -hmm. meeting. Uh, absolutely that's stupid what are you crazy where'd you get that idea from are you <laughs> drinking you know like very insulting kinds of and i'm not advocating that mm -hmm. but i mean no we tried that and then really just like you know blunt blunt uh, you know brutally honest about their uh views on the topic and we can't mm -hmm. do that blah, 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 blah. and then a decision's made Mm -hmm. One is extremely, you know, unhappy in the sense that that was totally what he didn't want. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as that decision is made, they stand up, the guy puts his arm around the other guys and says, so where do you want to go for lunch? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, wow, because I'll watch another meeting where there's two women who don't agree and they're mm -hmm. nice about it. Well, I think that, no, 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 no. And if it gets heated and there's that level of emotion, mm -hmm. they won't talk to each other for another 10 years. Yeah. In the oh, yeah. Place and, and avoid each other and go into the bathroom when they see each other. Like that level of gender difference when it comes to uh, organizational processes is very interesting. Mm -hmm. And it speaks to our topic of mm -hmm. what is it that we can learn as women Mm -hmm. from men mm -hmm. right we 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 want equality we want to sit at the big table we want to be more in the executive suites we want to and i think that when when we do value university it does a disservice to women and minorities mm -hmm. to to promote them up into positions that they have not been developed and prepared and skilled mm -hmm. Four, so they walk into these situations where it's not a natural thing mm -hmm. to support each other and to be able to let things go after a decision and it isn't personal. We mm -hmm. haven't mastered mm -hmm. that level of um, development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree. And I think that uh, when you look at women too, uh, 
we are part of a minority, right? And uh, we're the first look at, major minority, yes, I think. Minority, yes. and then you have ethnicities and uh, gender, <laughs> or, or you have you know other things. But uh, we did not historically have a piece of that pie, right? So what happens when you're all trying to scratch and claw to get to where you're going? Uh, you feel like you don't have enough. So I remember uh, because, uh, you know, first generation college students, uh, my brother and I, my brother was seven years older and he, God rest his soul, he was the first one to start and got me going with it. But the thing is, is that uh, when you have, uh, when you look at, um, you know, the way we're trying to get there and uh, not being able to get there and having your nose pressed up against the glass, okay? So for a long time, I was like, I loved how you said, you know, he with the most toys dies with the most toys does not win. Because I think that was another thing for our generation, the way we were cultured. So if we're going to make it, you know, somebody else is going to not have to make it or how are we going to get in there? So I think maybe when that starts to change in our society, women will, uh, you know, go along with that and work along with it. Uh, but I just think that women, like you say, we don't compete in that same way we don't and we don't uh have disagreements in the same way yeah and, absolutely and, yeah, so yeah um if uh, we're going to do a station id here if you've just tuned in and wondering who's in studio today it is colette tracy we are the real women talk a series mm -hmm. every other every first and third Wednesday of the month. And we are talking about women supporting women or not supporting each other and what to do about it. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll just continue this discussion and we'll focus on solution as we like to do so that if you're in that situation, you'll know how to approach people so that you are better supported. When we come back here on Real Women Talk with Colette Tracy and Dr. Marissa on Take My Advice. I'm not using a gift balance with Dr. Marissa and Colette Tracy. <laughs> here on SCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. Good evening, this is Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah, reporting live at the Newport Beach Film Festival 2019. And yes, it is time again for me to be one of the sponsors of the Chinese Spotlight film. We would like to call up celebrity talk host and happiness coach, Dr. Marissa Pai. Please welcome her with a big round of applause. Thank you, thank you. And I'm your uh, Chinese teacher for right now since we're in a Chinese spotlight film. So everybody say, Ni hao. That means you're terrible. No, I'm just kidding. It means, how are you?
is uh, Love costing. It. <laughs> Love it. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, so beautiful. not five days less, it's actually tonight. You can get your tickets at Newport Beach Film Festival. Use the code CHINESE2022 for an Asian Oprah giveaway discount. That is tonight, so join me. It's gonna be amazing. I may have to fly in. <laughs> yes, I think you should. Beach it will be. was the perfect setting for an international film festival. Holly, can you adjust the... I'm Kate Beckinsale. Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm Milo Ventimiglia. You're the Newport Beach Film Festival. Newport Beach stepping it up. Back your life with Dr. Marisha Pay. And welcome back. You're tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa and Colette Tracy. You're on Real <laughs> Talk or Real Women Talk mm -hmm. <laughs> on KCAA, NBC News Radio, AM 1050, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, and my YouTube channel, where you can get all 802 shows. How's there as long as, uh, as well as my new short film, PPP, you saw the trailer at the beginning, post-pandemic possibilities. I've been using that to help companies come back into the workplace in a more positive light. So if you'd like to do that, go to drmarissa.life and uh, fill out this little form and I'll contact you. We'll have a chat and uh, let's get ready to uh, come back to the workplace in a positive way. As well, my red carpet playlist. Uh, I got to interview um, Tony Hawk last year at the Newport mm. Beach Film Festival. Wow. Ron Howard was there yesterday. Unfortunately, I was working. I missed that interview. I didn't miss that interview. It was not meant to be. But you'll see my interviews with Halle Berry, John Travolta, The Temptations, um, uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon. All of those are also on my free subscribe YouTube channel. So go there and free subscribe. And you also get the alert to tune in every weekday morning here on the number one 8 a.m. show with me. So mm -hmm. I am inviting you to to make sure you come tonight. If you don't have anything to do, please come down to Newport Beach Film Festival. Join me on the red carpet. I will interview you. And, uh, oh, Pierce Brosnan was there a couple years ago as well. Wow. Uh, so this is definitely, it's the most diverse uh, film festival in the world. And I'm so honored to be one of the sponsors of the Chinese Spotlight Film. So I actually get to go to the front, introduce the film, and then the after party is what you should fly in for maybe next year. The lion dancing, the Korean dance, the drumming mm. is incredible. So we'll that's, have to plan uh, that's that. the commercial. Pardon? <laughs> we'll have to plan that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. All right. And we're back talking about women supporting or not supporting other women in the workplace and beyond. And uh, uh, traditionally, the last half of the show, we focus on solutions. So we've talked about the reality of the problem. And now how do we get to that place mm -hmm. of supporting each other? And I think, Colette, you already um, did a wonderful thing uh, uh, by introducing the whole, when you see something that you can compliment, 
in another woman, say it. Don't keep yeah. quiet. Uh, if it is your first impulse, like mine sometimes, is to, you know, look at it critically, not to look at the blemish, but to highlight the blessing mm -hmm. and uh, compliment people, yep. uh, particularly women. Yeah. What other things can we do, Colette? Well, I think going out of our way to really try to support women. So like on my social media uh, and for my book, of course, I wrote the book. Uh, I wrote the book, Both Sides Now, and then the Kindle Vela, The Best of Both Sides, because these are the things that I was pondering were the same things that I knew other women were. I had done interviews and research and things like that. Um, and I think just uh, going out of our way to support, uh, like through compliments or connecting with or uh, through social media, I have, um, you know, I have quite a few contacts, especially on LinkedIn, and majority of them really are women. And um, because I just think, uh, you know, as we age, too, I think that puts gives us a little more camaraderie, right? Because uh, we have, uh, we all have uh, issues with aging. We all have things that are changing and we need to support each other. And it comes to a point where men can't really do that the way women can for each other sometimes. Um, you know, for example, one of my friends just, she's laid up and she's had foot surgery, but you know, I went over there, we got together, we, we talked, we laughed like we were teenagers again, and it changed both of our moods. Now, I can do that with my husband. I we have a great time together sometimes. But we, you know, we need that connection from other women just as much, if not more, as we get older, because, you know, what happens? We have more women in society. Honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a fact of life. We have more women than we do men, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we have to have our sisterhood, right? We don't want to be alone. And I'm not saying we just have sisterhood because we don't have men, even if we do, and uh, the more the merrier. But I think we should go out of our way uh, to model that. You know, yesterday I was talking about in class, we're talking about leadership. So much modeling, role modeling going on. You know, be that inspiration. Be the person that you want other people to pick up on and follow. And, you know, mm -hmm. if it doesn't happen, then you learn from that, right? And, okay, you know, you try and... If people don't want to come around to that way of thinking, you can't change that, right? Mm -hmm. And you have mm -hmm. to be okay with yourself that you've done the best you can. So that's that's what that's that's my model right now. That is what I'm trying to work on, just like you, is to, you know, have uh, more women friends in my life, more women, and and help more women and and get together and and work together mm -hmm. um, on certain things. Yeah. That's great. Um, my tip would be, uh, it's very difficult to celebrate others if you can't celebrate yourself. Mm -hmm. And that comes from this base of, uh, there's a beautiful saying, I believe it's an African American proverb, uh, when there is no enemy within, then no one outside can hurt you. Mm -hmm. And I do know that for many women, not all women, but many women, taking criticism is like a death sentence. Mm -hmm. You don't want to hear anything negative because you end up taking that negativity. And even if someone directs a negative comment out there, the tendency is to run over to the arrow, <laughs> pick mm -hmm. it up and go, ah, it was me, it was me, it was mm -hmm. me. You know, and I mm -hmm. see this in meetings where you know, the supervisor or the manager will say someone did this and they won't name names. And the most of the women will say, was it me? Was it me? And mm -hmm. then the one person who's usually a guy, I won't say always, who needs to take that feedback <laughs> does it go straight over because it's not me, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why one of the tips I give managers and leaders is if you have um, something that you don't like or something with a person who's not performing at peak capacity, take them aside. Don't announce it to the entire group that there's an right. issue yeah. at, at, because then you're going to waste more time with all the people who think it's them, but it's not them. But most of the time, it's it's difficult for women to invite criticism because they don't want to get hurt 
right? Mm-hmm. They don't want to because they have such a strong critic inside already mm-hmm. that they take things personally and they think that it means that they're in and, and that hamster wheel of trying to be a perfect person, a perfect leader, perfect mm-hmm. manager uh, is particularly strong in women. So I always say the first step to being a good leader is to be really um, honoring and truthful and aware about what your strengths are Mm-hmm. what your not so strengths are mm-hmm. <laughs> and work at. And so I, I, when I'm in a good place, I will ask people to do a spot review and say, how, what are the, what's the best way in which I impact you? And what's one way that I could do better at, mm-hmm. and just allow myself to be comfortable with that feedback. Now mm-hmm. I'm not going to take any feedback to heart until it's been the same feedback three times from three different people Mm -hmm. because you you can't just change for one person Mm -hmm. when it comes to personal interpersonal effectiveness that's my rule three and three Mm -hmm. because i want to be more effective with a wider group of people Mm -hmm. so again if you can look as a woman at feedback as just something that helps you connect with a larger audience then Mm -hmm. it's less threatening to yourself you're not a bad person you haven't been doing it wrong Mm -hmm. you're just getting some information for you to be more effective with a wider audience. That's mm-hmm. all feedback is. Mm-hmm. And I know that when when my clients can switch feedback from this negative, critical, take me down uh, talk to something that enhances your effectiveness, then you've got the ticket. Mm-hmm. No, it's much I... easier for women than to take the criticism uh, from other women. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think it's, again, it's the way we're cultured, we're sensitive beings. And uh, we don't, you know, no, you know, we don't like to hear negative about ourselves and things like that. And I even know that from my classes, you know, you get the idea surveys. And even from my classes for both sides now, you know, they do the surveys and such. And most of them come back, you know, amazing, right? Because you know, I, I, I feel I am a very good teacher and my students like what I do. Some of them don't. And sometimes that's hard to take, you know, and you have to kind of say, all right, well, how can I learn from this? Right. What is the common theme here? Or is there, you know, you have to take into consideration too. And I'm, I'm talking about this and I've had to do it for myself recently. And my husband and I've talked about it at ad nauseum. Uh, but the thing is, sometimes you have to learn from say, look, what is the best thing about my teaching style? What is the best thing about the class? How do the majority of the students feel? Okay. Can I accommodate uh, the the people that don't feel like it's a good thing for certain reasons? Can I do that with, you know, and if I can't, if, if, if I'm, if I find the larger picture is that most people like what's being delivered or it's been very effective and you've had people really engaged then you got to say, well, okay, I'll keep it in mind, but Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but it's Mm -hmm. hard to do. It's hard to separate that and being in sales for so many years, you know, um, I had to do that a lot, but I learned how not to take that as personally, but, uh, you know, and sometimes it, you know, sometimes it wouldn't work. Sometimes I'd feel really bad. And problem is, you know, it's up and down, you know, what goes up comes down and it's hard to really roll with that. The first few Mm -hmm. years, the first probably to be honest, probably about the first 10 years of sales was, was really hard with, and I was always, you know, one of the top producers, but difficult, you know? Yeah. Well, rejection, rejection is not easy for anybody. It's not something that people go, Oh, please reject me. (laughs) (laughs) But but you do develop a thicker skin, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember that too, working in companies that, you know, the first company I worked at out of college, was very male dominated. And I remember my boss wanting to hire me and said, you know, you're going to have to have a little bit of a thick skin around here because, you know, and I'm telling you the truth. And he was right. And uh, though it wasn't severe, but, you know, that was a training ground for me. You know, it's a training ground Mm -hmm. for me, but hard way to take the lumps. Right. But yes. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Let's talk about sensitivity for a second. You mentioned that earlier. Um, I was a person that I hated when people would say to me, 
you're so sensitive. You're being so sensitive. Don't be so sensitive. You take things so personally. And I would get even madder than I was to start with. And what I realized is, and I think this is such an important point for women in the workplace, that we think there's something wrong with us when we're sensitive, when in mm -hmm. fact, the research is so clear that sensitivity is 100% correlated with creativity. Mm -hmm. So we do not want to go to the extreme of not having any sensitivity at all and having such thick mm -hmm. skin that we can't let out the innovation. That's what creativity mm -hmm. is, is in innovative thought. Mm -hmm. So I embrace my sensitivity. And at the same time, I recognize that what's not useful is my perfectionistic tendencies that make me look only at what's wrong with me instead of what's right with me. And that dovetails with your compliments that or the evaluations, the positive evaluations that you get as a professor. I had the same thing. The very first time that I taught, I don't know if I told you this, I, my first teaching was at Boston University in Brussels and the director there, uh, uh, Dr. William Salem, I will forever be grateful to him. He saw me, it was either me consulting at at and I was working with the country directors doing strategic planning and he uh, met me and then asked me to come and teach human resource management at BU. And I said, um, sure, you know, I love to try new things. And I did my first ever teaching and I sucked. I had the second <laughs> lowest evaluations uh, of all the professors. And I, I looked at him and I he called me in and I said, you know what, I can't be good at everything. This is obviously not my you know, forte. And he said, no, I'm not letting you quit. You're teaching next semester. Here's the evaluations, learn from them. Mm -hmm. And it was so painful reading mm -hmm. through, but when I got past the egoic yeah. hit, and I looked at it, they were right. I was insecure as a new professor. I repeated myself a lot. I wasn't, didn't have point outlines like I could have. And all of these things, I went from the second worst evaluations to the second best mm -hmm. evaluations in the next semester. So for me, it had to be its self-development. It is a knowing where, where I'm naturally you know, where I can mm -hmm. shine naturally and where I have to work on things. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of self-awareness and a lot of inner strength yeah. not to let it take me down. And yeah. then fast forward 10 years when I'm a professor at UCLA in the MBA school at Anderson, I had another class where uh, I taught managerial interpersonal communication and, and I got huge, you know, 99%, you're fabulous, you're so motivational, I love your uh, 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 lectures, and your great dresser, and, and all of these things, and, or I wish, you know, you taught all of my classes, beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. compliments, I had one guy, one guy, say, I would rather chew glass than listen to another of Dr. Pay's wow. lectures. Wow. Wow is right. And I bring that up because I, it doesn't take me down, but it's a nice, beautiful example of how you can't please everybody all mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. And not all criticism is uh, well-meaning. It's mm -hmm. more mean than well. Mm -hmm. And that was the same class where another student came up and said, you know, your talents are being wasted. You're such a good professor. My father's a producer. Have you ever thought about doing some TV commentary? And I went, oh yeah. <laughs> and that began, <laughs> that that launched my media um, personality and, and, and launched the whole media uh, wow. side of my life. So, so you know, I, you, I still talk about that, not because it doesn't cut me, you know, it's mm -hmm. not great, uh, I'm being honest and I don't have to tell you that it's kind of embarrassing, but it's an important lesson for me to know that I can't make everybody happy. However, I can learn how to be more effective with a wider audience and mm -hmm. that's the role of feedback. Mm -hmm. But you know what, uh, Dr. Marissa, I would say that that was a, that was a blanket statement and it was like, I'd rather chew glass or whatever. 
that wasn't anything that wasn't saying you know she didn't do this or she did that or and i didn't like that or whatever that there was some anger and personal issues behind that you could tell by the statement so of course that wouldn't be uh reflected toward on you but but you i can understand you feeling that way because it's like hateful you know what yeah. i mean and yeah. it really has nothing to do with i'm sure um you know the way you teach and or taught back then and uh everybody sucks when they first <laughs> i remember my first class oh my god i it was at my i just got in my masters and the business department there gave me a shot oh my, i was petrified but they were they were young students and if you're working with young students you can always see how they they don't like to interact they're really shy and i had no idea because i was used to training professional people and in the corporate world so yeah so it was it was very difficult and i thought about not doing it again but mm -hmm. i tried like you did i tried again and again and i i got really good and you know i love it beautiful so. beautiful we're coming up to the end of the show it always goes so fast mm -hmm. final word colleen on women supporting women we've got to make it a practice to do that we have got to uh when we see a woman and she looks good or she's given us a big smile or try smiling at other women you know i mean uh be friendly and and you'll get that back nine times out of ten and then some yeah but we've mm -hmm. got to, we've got to train ourselves to really appreciate other women yeah yeah absolutely it's a new day mm -hmm. as of the show if you have not actively supported a woman uh, this week's uh, or two weeks until I see you again. Let's mm -hmm. one compliment every day for a woman somewhere in your life. And then uh, look to a, a young woman, uh, hopefully someone that you see ha who may not be getting a lot of support, the one mm -hmm. that is shunned, the one that is set aside, a colorful woman maybe, uh, that's my favorite, uh, support them and tell them, look them in the eye and say, you can do anything you put your heart and mind to. This is Dr. Marissa uh, encouraging you to know that it's all about balance. Peace in, peace out, world peace through inner peace with Colette Tracy on Real Woman Talk. Thank you for joining us. Come to the Newport Beach Film Festival tonight for the Chinese Spotlight. You'll see me on stage there. And remember, go and have the best. Oh, we have one more minute. I don't have to go right away. Mm -hmm. um, Both Sides Now is Colette's book. Go pick it up at Amazon, at her website, which is colletttracy.com. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And you can get that book there. And um, I want you to tune in tomorrow for Straight Talk with Dr. Marissa and Sam Works. We talk about uh, being single. We talk about gender differences. We talk about flirting and relationships and, and uh, all of these new uh, labels that we have. Friday is Fired Up Fridays with Cynthia Cahey here. I'm so glad you're joining us. I want you now to go have the best day ever. See you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.